I feel like I need to breathe because I am so upset. Like, I, now, as I am sure most of you have heard by now, those of you who follow Miss Universe, that the preliminary competition is the same day as the national costume competition, okay? And in order to view it, um, you have to pay. It's a pay-per-view television or um, streaming event. So you can stream it on the website from their website as usual, but you have to pay. There's no Facebook streaming. There's no YouTube streaming. We have to pay to view it. Um, this news just came out recently. This is the first time they've ever done that. And I don't know what their plans are in terms of streaming for the final event, if they're going to make people pay as well. Um, and this is just so upsetting. And it literally is, I have held back for the most part on some of my views on Miss Universe pageant, which is my favorite international pageant by far. But I think so many changes have been happening. So many things have been going on that have been really terrible. And I've just kept that to myself because I feel like maybe I'm just being a bit negative. But this for me is like the final straw. It's ridiculous. And there's an online petition. I don't know if there's more than one to stop them from doing that so that they can change their minds. Hopefully they do. Um, but if they don't, I would encourage people not to pay. I mean, look, if you can afford it, that's great. I'm happy for you. Uh, but 20 US dollars is a lot of money to spend on watching something that was normally free. Um, and, you know, I, I just think if you like, please don't do it, because if a lot of people pay, that's what they're going to continue doing. And they're going to do it for the final night as well. And there's so many people who can't afford that. Because first of all, when you're streaming, you're already paying for Wi Fi, which is obviously separate. So access to Wi Fi is not cheap in many places in the world. And now you've got to pay an extra $20. That is a lot of money and that's just so unfair for so many different people, especially for something that has been free and that has also helped, you know, with its popularity. So I just encourage people not to pay, but I just also want to speak about the things that have been bothering me about Firstly, Miss Universe. Firstly, this competition, the, the girls only for this year, for Miss Universe 2019, I can't even compose myself, they are only in Atlanta for 10 days, which is incredibly short. In past years, it's been like just under three weeks. They spend like the first week having events, going out, having fun, enjoying the city. Like if they're in Las Vegas, they'll be going out, they'll be having fun, photo shoots, it's so playful. And then, you know, the second week they start to, you know, it starts to get serious, they have rehearsals, a long time to rehearse, a long time to prepare. And then we go into the interviews and the preliminary competition and the national costume competition. So it really is such a long stretch. It's such a great time you know we love seeing the pictures the videos and it's just an i'm sure it's an amazing experience for all the contestants now they've condensed it to 10 days they arrived there they went straight into registration and fitting which is normal um but then they've just started rehearsals like they were on day three of rehearsals while as i'm recording this i'm recording this on a tuesday tuesday the first third of december so this is the third day of rehearsals um everything is so intense it's like obviously these are budget constraints so something is going on with their budget like they don't have enough money i'm assuming and the signs of this i don't think there were any signs in 2015 and 2016 when img took over from donald trump for those of you who don't know donald trump owned the U miss universe organization from 1996 and he sold it um at the end of he sold it in 2015 when he started running for president of the united states um but he was not the only um owner but he was the majority owner and he played a big role in the organization and 96 to 2014 those were like the the golden years of miss universe really the most some of the most memorable winners it was fantastic he sold it and it's now a part of img uh, it was owned by img and the first miss universe img pageant was in 2015 the year pier one the year that big mistake happened with steve harvey Steve Harvey came in as host. He signed on for five years, and this is going to be his fifth year, hopefully his final year, because it's enough now. Um, 2015 seemed fine. 2016, great. It was in the Philippines. Awesome. And then 2017, the competition was held in Las Vegas. That's the year that South Africa won, Demi Lee, now Peters. Um, the preliminary competition. That year. The, the, the pre, pre, this day. I am shocked. 
I'm shocked by that preliminary stage. I mean, this is Miss Universe. Miss Universe. That stage was so dingy. It looked like it was in a basement. It looked makeshift. It was so dark. It was so small. It was terrible. I mean, for like any pageant, really, I, I, any national pageant, I would think that's terrible. Like if it was Miss Thailand or Miss Philippines or Miss South Africa, I would say that's a terrible stage. Now for that to be Miss Universe, yes, it's not the final competition, but it is the preliminary competition. There are 90-something women from all around the world on that stage, and that is the stage that you provide for them. That was beyond shocking. I, it was horrific. Like that was a horrible stage. They did the national costume competition there as well. Imagine all those beautiful costumes that were painstakingly made for months and months are shown off on a stage like that that doesn't do them justice. So that was a sign already. Thankfully, the final night stage was beautiful. Um, so, you know, people got over it, but I didn't get over it. Like, I still, I'm in shock till this day. 2018, the show was beautiful. It was in Thailand. It was perfect, perfection. I didn't see anything wrong with it. And now this year, and they do this all the time, but it was so annoying this year because this year was even later than usual. We never find out where the competition is going to be until like maybe a month or six weeks before. It's so rushed. Um, Miss, the Miss World organization is much uh, more timeless with that. We know when it's going to be. We know where it's going to be. I still think they could be a little bit more... Um, forthcoming with the information but they're better miss universe is like we never know where it's gonna be we never know when it's gonna be and right until the end and i think that it would be so advantageous if people knew where it was taking place and when it was taking place at least for um at least if we knew the exact month is it november is it december is it january um so it's just the fact that they don't seem to have their house in order uh and then another thing that irritates me are the placements 2015 was fine. They had a top 15, top 10, top 5, and then they had the top 3, which I really like. That has been, that's an IMG era thing. They have top 3, they have the final word, the last look. I think that's actually a really good thing. Um, then, then 2016, they did the weirdest thing. They had the top 13, then they had a top 9, and then a top 6, and then obviously top 3. Like, top 13, really? Why would they make it such a an odd number and why would it and an unlucky number and so few placements i think the more the more semi-finalists you have the better because you're giving more people a chance and you're making it a better show so just having 13 was weird and that was the year when they came out on stage in groups of three and two and it was awful yeah that year was really bad the placements were so strange um and then also for me i'm just going to be honest i didn't like the winner iris she's not bad but I really would have thought that Haiti or 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 Colombia would have been better. Um, I think that Thailand would have been better. I loved Chalita that year, um, so that was strange. And then 2017 is when they began these continental divisions, which are so unfair. They are the definition of um, of unfair. Like, literally, there are contestants who did not qualify to be in the top 16 because they were not high enough in their region. They may have scored more than someone else in another region, but there has to be four from Europe because that, that year was four from each region. So there has to be four from Africa, Asia, Pacific, four from Europe, and then four from the Americas, and then four wild cards. That was a crazy concept. They did it again in 2018, but now they increased it to five. And I was very happy with having a top 20 because the more semifinals, the better. And I think 20 is a great number. Shouldn't be more than that. Maybe it could be. Maybe it could be 25. I don't know. But 20 is good. I, I like that. But I don't. I didn't like the Continental Divisions. Um, it seems like those are gone this year, but we can never be too sure, really. I mean, I feel like we'll only be sure like the preliminary night. Not that we'll be able to watch anyway, uh, at least most of us. So, yeah, see, but it seems like they've gotten rid of the top 20, the, you know, continental divisions, and they're just going to have a top 20. We're hearing all sorts of reports that it's top 20, then it goes straight to top 6. I don't, I don't even know what to think about those, and I don't know where people are getting their information. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think they would jump from top six, 20 to top 6. Because if you look at, because that doesn't make sense, 
And secondly, if you look at some of the videos of Luciera doing the uh, choreography, well not choreography, but she's like practicing with the girls during rehearsals. And there was a part where they were having placements and there were 10 placements. Um, so that's a hint that there is probably going to be a top 10 for evening gown as usual. So that would be fantastic. And I hope they do it different from last year. Last year they went from, straight from a top 20 to a top 10. Um, I wish they had a top 20 swimsuit and then they cut it down to top 10, but that's just a minor detail. And so now they, we, they're asking us to pay to watch the preliminary competition. My whole thing with the logic is, is like, obviously we all are pageant fans. We love pageants. We love Miss Universe. We love Miss World. Okay, maybe we don't love Miss World, but we really like pageants and we're passionate about it. But generally in the world, pageants are very unpopular and people see them as sexist and as backward and as anti-feminist. So they really are unpopular. The only reason why these pageants are still alive is because people like us watch these pageants, we support the pageants, we buy tickets to go watch them live, we talk about them on YouTube, on social media. We are keeping these pageants alive. So why would you be hostile to the last few people on earth who still care about your pageants, who still care about what happens and who are passionate? Why do you not listen to what we have to say? Why do you not listen to our concerns and try to accommodate us? And to be so selfish and to be like, okay, we're going to milk these people for all that they're worth. We're trying to make as much money as possible. Um, maybe you should go to Donald Trump and ask him for advice on how to make this organization profitable. Maybe you should find other ways to make it profitable. Maybe you should get more interesting winners. Maybe you should get more interesting placements. Maybe you should listen to the fans and listen to what we want so that you can maintain relevancy instead of trying to make us or trying to isolate us and milk us for every single penny that you can find. Because this is what they're doing. They obviously are running low on funds. And they're like, okay, how can we make people pay? So we're making people pay to vote if they want to vote more than once. We're making people pay to watch the freaking preliminary competition and the national uh, costume competition. That is ridiculous. It is absurd. And it is so capitalist, but in the most um, negative way. Um, okay. What do you guys think? <laughs> I've given so much of my opinion and I'm obviously very upset about it. Tell me if you're going to pay. Tell me if you're not. And tell me what you think about the Miss Universe organization. And would you want to see like Donald Trump come back or someone else who's going to really take this pageant into the right direction and not into irrelevancy and oblivion. Sorry, oblivion. Uh, I'd like to hear what you think. Please subscribe to me for more videos because leading up to Miss Universe, I'll be... I'll be posting more videos and Optimus Universe and as always throughout the year. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you.